सेवाया ओ नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय अथ ते रामकृष्णाभ्याम सम्यक प्राप्त समर्हण प्रशशम सुमुसुर्मुदा युक्ता वृष्णिन कृष्ण परिग्रहान अथ ते रामकृष्णाभ्याम सम्यक प्राप्त समर्हण प्रशशम सुर्मुदा युक्ता वृष्णिन कृष्ण परिग्रहान अथ ते रामकृष्णाभ्याम सम्यक प्राप्त समर्हण प्रशशम सुसुर्मुदा युक्ता वृष्णिन कृष्ण परिग्रहान अथ देन ते दे राम कृष्णाभ्याम बाय बलराम एंड कृष्णा सम्यक प्रॉपरली प्राप्त हैविंग रिसीव्ड समरहना हा एप्रोप्रिएट टोकन्स ऑफ ऑनर प्रशाम एंथुजिस्टिकली प्रेज्ड मुदा विच जॉय युक्त फील्ड वृष्णि द वृष्णीज कृष्णा ऑफ लॉर्ड कृष्णा परिग्रहान द पर्सनल असोसिएट्स Translation. 
after Lord Balaram and Lord Krishna had liberally honored them, with great joy and enthusiasm, these kings began to praise the members of the Vrishni clan, Sri Krishna's personal associates. We are going to read up to text 30. Aho bhojapate yuyam janma bhajo nuramiha yat pashyatha sat krishnan durdashamabhi yoginam. The king said, O king of the bhojas, you alone among men have achieved a truly exalted birth. For you continually behold Lord Krishna, who is rarely visible even to great yogis. Text 29 and 30. Yad bhishruti hi shruti nute dam alam punati pada vane jana payascha vachascha shastram bhu kala bharajita bhagapi yad ingra padma sparashotha shaktir vivarshati no khilarthan tad darshan sparshana nu patha prajalpam Shayasana Shana Sayo Nasa Pindabandha Yesham Gruhe Nirayavatma Vartmani Vartatam Vaha Svarga Pavarga Viramaha Svayamasa Vishnuhu His fame as broadcast by the Vedas, the water that has washed his feet and the words he speaks in the form of the revealed scriptures. These thoroughly purify this universe. Although the earth's good fortune was ravaged by time, the touch of his lotus feet has revitalized her, and thus she is raining down on us the fulfillment of all our desires. The same Lord Vishnu who makes one forget the goals of heaven and liberation, has now entered into the mar marital and blood relationships with you, who otherwise travel on the hellish path of family life. Indeed, in these relationships, you see and touch him directly, walk beside him, converse with him, and together with him lie down to rest, Sit at ease and take your meals. <clears throat> Purport. All the Vedic mantras glorify Lord Vishnu. This truth is supported with elaborate evidence by learned Acharyas like Ramanuja in his Vedartha Sangraha and Madhva in his Rigveda Bhasya. The words Vishnu himself speaks, such as the Bhagavad Gita, are the confidential essence of all scriptures. In his manifestation as Vyasadeva, the Supreme Lord composed both the Vedanta Sutras and Mahabharata. And this Mahabharata includes Sri Krishna's personal statement, Vedaischa Sarvair Aham Eva Vedyo Vedanta Krit Veda Videva Chaham By all the Vedas, I am to be known, indeed, I am the compiler of Vedanta and I am the knower of the Vedas. Bhagavad Gita 15.15 .15. When Lord Vishnu appeared before Bali Maharaj to beg three steps of land, the Lord's second step pierced the shells of the universe. The water of the transcendental river Viraja, lying just outside the universal egg, thus sipped inside, washing Lord Vamana's foot and flowing down to become the Ganges river. Because of the sanctity of its origin, the Ganges is generally considered the most holy of rivers. But even more potent is the water of Yamuna, where Lord Vishnu in his original form of Govinda played with his intimate companions. In these two verses, the assembled kings praise the special merit of Lord Krishna's Yadu clan. Not only do they see Krishna, but they are also directly connected with him by dual bonds of marital and blood relationships. 
Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti suggests that the word bandha, besides its more obvious meaning of relation, can also be understood in the sense of capture, expressing that the love the yadus feel for the Lord obliges him always to stay with them. Om Ajnanati Mirandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bhishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Preshthaya Bhutale Srimate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Saraswate Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschatya Deshatarine Vancha Kalpatarubhyascha Kripa Sindhubhya Evacha Patitanam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadigaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Athate Rama Krishna Bhyam Samyak Prapata Samarhanaham Prashasham Sarmuda Yukta Vrishnin Krishna Parigrahan We are reading from Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 10, Chapter 82, entitled Krishna Meets the Inhabitants of Rindavan, text number 27. So here <coughs> we are discussing the pastime of the Yadavas headed by Krishna and Balram, they decide to go to the holy land of Kurukshetra at the place known as Sabanta Panchaka, where Lord Parshuram, he had performed many sacrifices in order to purify himself, even though he is a Supreme Lord, He sets an example that he had killed the Kshatriyas 21 times. The whole earth was rid of Kshatriyas 21 times. And he had collected all that blood in various kundas. <clears throat> so to absolve himself of this, he had performed many sacrifices. And that's why that place of Kurukshetra became very holy. And the occasion is that there is a solar eclipse and such times are considered very inauspicious very they can bring great calamities on the person and the society so therefore such occasions are in the Vedic culture taken for doing lot of penances fasting sacrifices charity and that is the reason the whole Yadu clan, everyone is assembled here. And now we read that how various kings, first there was discussion between Vasudev and Kunti, who were meeting after long many years. And yesterday we heard how Krishna Chaitanya, Ch uh, Chaitanya Charan Prabhu described how the fate or destiny. Uh, today's thought process is that these are all created by genes. So there is no superior 
power which can govern the destiny. But they know that somebody is governing. They very beautifully pointed out that they would give credit to anything else except the Lord. Because of natural, this is the material world that we are come here because of the innate envious nature. So we don't want to accept. Very beautifully brought out. But here now, we can see in these verses, these beautiful verses, what we are seeing is a culture which elevate people from this downgraded, degraded mentality of giving credit to anything else but Lord Sri Krishna. To elevated consciousness. How to elevate our consciousness by a culture? So here we are seeing the culture. Earlier verses describe that it is not only Krishna's friends have come, not only Yudhishthir Maharaj's friends have come, but there are even the adversaries, the enemies are also there. But even they are being very nicely received, respected, honored by Krishna and Balaram and being pleased with their honor by such opulent personalities. The abode of all opulences, Lord Krishna and Lord Balaram. In fact, the description is so beautiful that not only Lord Krishna and Balaram are described as most beautiful and most opulent people, even his sons, Pradyumna, Samba, other Yadavas, not only them, but even the soldiers who are guarding them, they are described as, as if they are very highly exalted demigods. That was the opulence which was exhibited at this place, at Samantha Panchak. So imagine the atmosphere, everyone is so happy and the Supreme Lord, He is honoring them. So they are very happy. And then they are honoring in turn all the Yadavas by very beautiful verses describing their glory of how they are able to associate with Lord Krishna. What is their good fortune? So here we see this culture, the consciousness which is created by that culture, which elevates us in spirituality. In the material nature, material world, the consciousness automatically degrades us. We don't have to do hard work for that. We are automatically envious, automatically disrespectful, we have a tendency to do wrong things. That doesn't take much to be dishonest. It's automatic. What is not automatic in this material world is the spiritual consciousness. Because the world is designed in such a way. The original need for this world is because the living entity desired that, okay, I want to be separate from you, Krishna. So, okay, here is something for you. Do whatever you want. So it is designed to help that consciousness of going away from Krishna, being envious of Krishna, being competitive of Krishna, being competitive of anything that is related to Krishna. So this is the design of this material world. Just like gravity, anything you, when you start something, you start a project, you start something good, so there is a lot of energy required, it goes up. But very soon you find the project is going down, the crowd is becoming less, whatever. We have all experienced this. Everything comes down, the gravity pulls you down. It's very natural. To breathe, to live, you require effort. You have to pull in air, like this. But exhale, you don't do anything. It's a passive process. Exhalation is automatic. Expire is automatic. Death is automatic. You don't have to do anything. To live, you have to struggle. This is material world. Everything that is important, from spiritual angle, there is a lot of struggle. So in this design, Krishna sends, through the Vedic philosophy, through the Varanashram Dharma, a culture, a culture which will elevate our consciousness. And what is the culture we are talking here? The culture, what we are seeing here, is the culture of 
respect according to their positions and respect and appreciative culture. Because they are respected, they start appreciating. They go hand in hand. And we see that this is the theme of the Vedic civilization. These are, you can say, the foundational principles of Vedic civilization. Respect and appreciation. It was not that you appreciate and respect people whom you love or whom you know, even the enemies. For example, when Hanuman, he saw Ravan for the first time. When he saw Ravan, the personality, Valmika Ravan writes, Hanuman immediately felt, oh, this man, he was very angry to see him. But still, he said, this man, he has the personality, he has the strength to even occupy Indra's position. He's so great. So, he respected that personality. We see Lord Balaram, when he goes to Vrindavan, he's a supreme lord. After many years, after they leave Vrindavan and go to Mathura, many years later he goes back to Vrindavan. And we hear how he respected everyone according to their position. He respected Nanda Maharaj, elderly Gopas, by touching their feet. To his equals he embraced them. To the younger ones he gave, their, gave his blessing. So there is a way of how to respect according to various positions. And that is Vedic culture, that is Vedic civilization. And it's not that only the good people did it, even the demons followed it. The Vedic civilization is like this. The demons also followed this culture. In the Mahabharata we hear that one day Duryodhan was very upset and he went to Bhishma Pitama and said, what are you doing? The war is going on. I thought you have the capacity to annihilate the whole army within a day. But I don't see that you are fighting with your valor, full valor. So he was accusing. Now, for a Kshatriya, such accusations are very insulting. So Bhishma immediately said, tomorrow you will see all the Pandavas will die. These are the five arrows. Take it. So Duryodhan, he was very happy. He took all the arrows, kept them very secretly. Of course, Lord Krishna, he knows what's going on. So he told Arjun, let's go to Duryodhan. And Arjun went to Duryodhan. After the evening, night came, then they were all friends. They could go to each other's tent. He went there and Duryodhan said, Oh, you are my younger brother and you have come to me. Whatever you want, I will give you. If you want, I will give you my kingdom. So Arjun said, No, give me only those five arrows. <laughs> so he took the five arrows. And then they were saved. The point is, even Duryodhan knew this culture of respect. And we see Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's life. Advaita Acharya was always wanting to be his servant. Parmananda Puri always wanted to be his servant. But still, wherever he went, he would offer them obeisances. He would make them sit, first feed them, then eat it. Very, very respectful. Srila Prabhupada dedicates his books to his father. Very respectful. That's our culture. The culture of respect, Samman. So collectively it is, it gives a flourishing atmosphere for spiritual growth of all people, population in general. And at an individual level, this simple, it may appear, giving respect, what's so big about it? But giving respect gives you advancement in spiritual life. You advance in spiritual life just by giving respect. One of the Vaishnava Acharyas, he beautifully sings to his Guru, Gurudev Kripa Bindu Diya. Give me little kripa 
And what is he asking? He is asking for some attitudes. He is asking for something which is very much wanted by all of us. So he is saying, Sakale Sammana Karite Haibe. I want that position where I can give samman or respect to all. Deha Natha Yathayatha. Yathayatha means according to their positions, I should be able to give respect to people. What is the result of that? He says, Tabeto Gaibo Harinama Sukhe. When I do this, then very happily I'll be able to sing the holy name. Without any offences. So imagine, we are always wanting that I want to chant offencelessly. No offences. So what is the prerequisite? Sakala Samman. We must respect. And there is a dangerous trend, even within the spiritual organization, including ISKCON, that we feel that, okay, I am chanting Hare Krishna, so I have a right to judge people. So as soon as you get, take that position, you cannot respect people. So we start judging our parents. Uh, they are many, many new devotees. They feel, I am Prahlad and they are Hiranyakashipu. <laughs> because they are opposing my Krishna consciousness. Or those who are married, they feel, my in-laws, they are horrible. But they are mother-in-law. They are mother and father. Respect them. It's not that Lord Ram respected only when Kaiki was good to him. Kaiki banished him to the forest 14 years. Still, when Lakshman, Bharat, they were verbally abusing Kaiki, Lord Ram said, No, you can't do that. That's against our culture. She has to be respected because she is your mother. Even though such atrocity had happened. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, when he was in Jagannath Puri, one of his spiritual masters, God brother Ramchandra Puri came there. Ramchandra Puri was very famous for criticizing people. He had a very amazing technique of how to catch people and criticize and disrespect them. So he would, he would very humbly, apparently humbly would tell the devotees, why don't you give me a chance to serve you today Prasad? So please, no, 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 you are our Guru, we should serve you. No, I want to serve you. You are such an exalted Vaishnava, please come. So he would take the Vaishnava, feed him and the Vaishnava would say, no, 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 I, I, this is enough. So, no, no, please take little bit for me, for my sake. So he would give him something more and he would say, he would fall on his plate. No, now it is sufficient. So no, little bit. You know, please keep my, I am elder to you. Some respect you should have. Take this some more Malpua. So once he is almost here now, <laughs> that time suddenly Ramchandra Puru would say, Ah, I see now how Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's disciples, followers are so interested in sense gratification. I knew this very well. And people were very unhappy with this. And one day, he came to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and he was always trying to find a fault. Ki when will I catch Mahaprabhu in this? But he could never find any fault. So that day, in the Gambira where Lord Chaitanya was staying, he saw some ants crawling. So he immediately said, look at these ants. They are going to the sweets which are quietly, secretly kept by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So that he can eat when no one is watching. I know what kind of sannyasi he is. So all the devotees, they felt so sad, so morose. They were like ready to do anything to him. <laughs> but Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, no, 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 no. He is on the level of my spiritual master. He looks at me as his son. 
so he has a right to criticize me and after that chaitanya mahaprabhu practically reduced eating to maybe less than half and that was giving more and more pain to the devotees and only when he left then the devotees felt relieved oh he is gone so this is the culture that in spite of the elderly people they might disrespect or criticize the younger generation respect still has to be there and the respect culture is practically everywhere in the way we eat it's a respectful way of eating the way we speak the way we write everything has respect in it whatever we do has to have respect so this culture of having respect is very very foundational to our spiritual life and we should take it very seriously in our own lives how to respect people and things according to their own positions mother nature we should respect the animals we respect the plants we respect the ants we respect so it is very very conducive very very um you can say that culture of respect and appreciation makes the heart very fertile so that our bhakti ladga can very grow very fast very jubilantly and then we see the culture of appreciation which again comes from again when you respect you appreciate this again has tremendous value in our life as a devotee in fact one of the purports shri prabhupad he simply writes one small statement which is very it has a big value in our life he writes simply by appreciating devotees we can go back to godhead such a big statement he doesn't say simply by chanting or he said simply by appreciating devotees because even before chanting the appreciation comes only when you appreciate a devotee or a person connected to krishna then you feel like doing something like what he is doing so he is chanting so i will chant so this appreciation culture is also very strong in our vedic civilization very very strong we will see that even the enemies when they are fighting in the war if somebody is fighting very valiantly very bravely then you will see descriptions in rama and mahabharat of the wars many people they would stop their fighting and they would look at them and say wow both sides they would you know give them encouragement the way you are fighting very appreciative the chaitanya mahaprabhu's leela we see so many leelas where chaitanya mahaprabhu is appreciating his devotees when mahaprabhu lived in jagannath puri every day he would take darshan of lord jagannath and after that upal bhog darshan he would go to the kutir of haridas thakur and one day he was just visiting haridas thakur with some mahaprasad and suddenly rup goswami he had just traveled from vrindavan he came and offered obeisances and haridas thakur introduced here is rup goswami offering you obeisances and immediately chaitanya mahaprabhu embraced him they were very happy and when many days passed like that rath yatra came and in rath yatra chaitanya mahaprabhu he started singing a particular verse which no one understood except swarup damodar about his mood in the mood of shrimati radharani he was appealing to jagannath sham sundar that how radharani is longing that he comes from kurukshetra to the land of rindavan on the bank of river reva in the moonlit nights to enjoy past times with her and rupa goswami heard this and then he wrote down another verse which also says the same thing in a beautiful way that actually you are the same lord i am same radharani but still somehow i am not very happy here 
I still want to go back to the bank of Yamuna and I want to hear your flute, only then I will be happy. So this verse is written down. So Mahaprabhu comes there and Rupa Goswami is not there. So he is sitting in the hut of Haridas Thakur and he sees that a palm leaf is stuck in the roof, grass that was thatched hut. So he removes it, reads it. First of all he appreciates, what a beautiful handwriting. Then he reads the verse, then he says, suddenly Rupa Goswami comes and he asks, how did you know my heart? This is exactly what I was thinking. Then he takes the verse with him. He was so happy with it. He goes and shows it to Ramananda Raya. He asks Swarup, Hey Swarup, please tell me, how did Rupa Goswami know my heart? So Swarup Damodar says, that means he has received your mercy. And in this way, Rupa Goswami, Sanatan Goswami, Haridas Thakur, all these devotees were glorified by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu with lot of appreciation for every quality they had. The description is that as if he had ten mouths, he would describe their glories. And then the devotees would also be very happy. Very, very happy to hear this glorification, the appreciation. Even Srila Prabhupada even though he would chastise his disciples as a matter of duty to correct them. But in his heart there was a different mood. He would appreciate them. He would say, you all are being sent by my Guru Maharaj. You are representatives of my Guru Maharaj. Without you I cannot do anything. This is the mood of appreciation which Srila Prabhupada carried always in his heart. And in this way, he has shown us the pathway by which we can learn how to respect and appreciate the devotees. Because without that appreciation, we are very likely to commit offenses. Very likely we will lose our enthusiasm to do devotional service. What comes in the way of our Krishna consciousness is that we do not follow this culture of respect and appreciation. So sometimes a person may think that, okay, I am chanting Hare Krishna, I know the philosophy, I know the goal of life, that is sufficient. The Shastras say that you chant Hare Krishna and everything, all the anarthas from the heart will go away. So what is the need of this kind of culture? What is the need of, culture means cultivation. We need to cultivate these kind of good habits or good attributes in our life. So what is the need of such a thing? I am already chanting Hare Krishna, one day automatically everything will happen. But that, that is not accepted by the scriptures. The scriptures tell you what they expect. When Krishna says in various verses, particularly in the twelfth chapter, who is dear to him? So he doesn't say one who chants Hare Krishna is dear to me. Of course he has said it in a different way at various places. But he says, Advesta, Surabhutanam, Karuna, Maitra, Evaj. Various qualities is describing. These qualities come from the culture. These qualities have to be developed. We have to work on it. So this culture is something like, you, know, you have say a Brahmastra with you. What is that Brahmastra? It's the holy name. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. It's called as Maha Mantra. It includes all other mantras throughout the universe, whatever is existing. It's Maha Mantra. It's a powerful astra with us. What is the effect of it? It can destroy, it can nullify everything, every wrong, every sinful activity which we have committed in the past and every sinful activity which we can commit in the future. Such powerful. Very, very powerful arrow. We have it with us. But to shoot that arrow, you require a good bow. Like Ram, when Parshuram challenged him, 
So Parashram did not know. He thought somebody has broken this Shiva Dhanusha, so I must challenge him. So he came right in the Swayamvar of Sita and he challenged Ram. So Ram said, I broke it. He was demanding, who has broken it? I want to see him. So Ram said, I broke it. But he said it with such respect, such honor. Just by looking at it, Parshuram could understand, okay, here is the divinity personified. He is my Lord. So he said, okay, I have some doubts. Take this. This is Vishnu's bow. Take this. And if you can string this, then my doubts will be removed. So Parshuram gave the bow of Vishnu to Lord Ram. Ram easily took it, he strung it, placed an arrow. And then Lord Ram said very significantly, he said, now this arrow cannot be kept back. It has to go somewhere, it has to destroy something. So tell me, I, am, I can destroy your power of traveling at the speed of mind. I can destroy all the virtues and this pious credits you have got. What do you want me to do? And Parshuram said, see, several times I killed all the Kshatriyas and I donated this earth to Kashyapa Muni. And Kashyapa then said, since you have donated this earth to me, now you cannot live here. <laughs> Even though you have donated, you cannot live here on this earth. So therefore, now I have to travel at the speed of, I can only come, come in the daytime, I cannot rest here. So at night I have to go to the Mahendra Parvat, where I can rest, which is beyond the earth. So don't take, take away my power to travel, but you take away all my pious credits. Because, because of these pious credits, I have become very arrogant. I have anger in me. I am not humble. So take away all this. And this is what it is. The Mahamantra is such an arrow which can take away all the anarthas quickly. And then Lord Ram shot that arrow and destroyed all his credits. So same arrow can be shot from a strong bow which is based on this foundation of the culture of respect and appreciation. We have two prominent cultures in this world. The culture of Bhogavad, where every individual, he thinks that the world is for him. There is a basic difference. The world is meant for me. And the Vedic civilization says, no, you are meant for the world. It's a very big difference in how you think. So when you start thinking that you are the center of the universe, you need to enjoy and the world should supply you enjoyment, the relatives, the, the organizations, the nation, everyone should serve you the, your needs. It's a very, very disrespect because you will automatically start expecting something which is not due for you. And that's when you start disrespecting and expecting everyone else to respect you. Then the principle of Amanina, it goes away. Amanina manedana kirtaniya sadahari. Only when we have that principle in our life of respecting everyone, then we can chant always. So, this powerful arrow of the Harinam has to be shot from this very strong bow of the culture. If you have a broken bow, which is the egoistic Bhogavadi culture, the arrow cannot be shot properly. It will go in different direction. It will not have the desired effect. And that is exactly what is creeping in, in the devotional societies also. That even within the Hare Krishnas, within the spiritual cultures, people bring that Bhogavadi culture and try to superimpose spiritually into it. Into it doesn't happen, cannot happen. You have to have a culture which supports the spiritual growth. This support the culture of me being the last. What is Vaishnavism? I am last. 
Das, 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 anudas. That's our culture. Not that I am first and I am the boss and everyone else has to serve me. Many years back I was in one of the temples in UK and one guru, he was giving class and he was little distressed and he, I would name, wouldn't name him. But he read a letter of a Hare Krishna devotee to him, to the guru. And the devotee, because he is brought up in that culture of me first, everything for me, Hare Krishna for me, everything is for me. Hare Krishna should give me enjoyments, relief from my anxieties. I should be peaceful because I am in Hare Krishna. So he writes to his Guru, Dear Gurudev, it's your mistake that you did one, two, three, four. Your greatest mistake that you accepted me as your disciple. Those kind of letters. Why? Because this person was thinking that there is no need to respect. We are all equals. The so-called equality of the modern culture is rejected by Vedic culture. Deha natha yathayata. There has to be respect according to positions. So he is thinking that I am also a SCON member, my Guru is also a SCON member. We are equal. He is chanting Hare Krishna, I am chanting Hare Krishna. He is following the regulatory principle, I am following the regulatory Where is the difference? My service to wash pots, his service is to initiate disciples. Why? We are all equal. This is a dangerous culture which can actually take away all the credit which we have mercifully received from Srila Prabhupada, from our Acharyas of getting these holy names, getting the Vaishnava principles. Those principles have to be practiced on this culture. And in this way, when we do this, then we will see that there is an immediate difference. The, the speed at which a devotee can progress is very fast when this culture comes. It's not that in the other culture also, Krishna consciousness does affect. It does purify the heart, but it will take long, long time. But as soon as there is basic culture of respect and appreciation is there, then Krishna consciousness becomes very easy. Very easy. Why do, when we come to the temple, why are we able to chant very nicely? Or why are we able to be enthusiastic? Because we see here that people have respect for each other. People have appreciation for each other. And wherever this is seen, like when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Nityananda Prabhu were together, if they were embracing each other, devotees would go in ecstasy. Why? Because they want to see it like that. That's the natural tendency of the soul, to see like that. One time, Mukunda Dat, he came and Mahaprabhu and Nityananda Prabhu, they are sitting together. So he came and offered obeisances to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu first. Then he offered to Nityananda Prabhu. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu did not even look at him. Next day he understood that why he did not look at me. Next day he came, first offered obeisance to Nityananda Prabhu, then to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Immediately Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was smiling and happy. Why? Because Chaitanya Mahaprabhu treated Nityananda Prabhu as his spiritual master, as his elder. Deha Natha Yathayata. To respect is according to the position. So somebody may be related to us as a father, as a teacher. There has to be that respectful culture. If that is not there, we will make a grave mistake of our life. Another one more point I would like to deliberate here is that we can see that even Duryodhan is there amongst all of these people. You can see that Duryodhan, Gandhari, Dhritarashtra, who are practically enemies of dharma, they are against Krishna, but they are there, but all of them, it is not said that they said something else, all of them together they were appreciating the good fortune of the Vrishnis. What is this? Why it has happened? Because first of all, there is a culture of respect from Krishna's side and there is an effect of that dham, the place. In that place, automatically the culture comes up. Automatically the anathas go down. 
That is why it is recommended that we must go to the dham. Because in the dham, the Lord resides eternally. There is no enmity, there is no enviousness, it's automatic there. When Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was traveling to the Dharikhand forest, he saw many wild animals. He saw one tiger, he is sleeping on the road. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is in ecstasy, he's chanting Krishna's names. And suddenly he sees tiger, he mildly kicks him. And his servant, you know, Palabhadra Bhattacharya, he is very afraid. What will happen now? The tiger is sleeping and he's awakened him. So tiger, you know, he gets up and he's about to roar. But then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, don't do that. Chant Hare Krishna. <laughs> so he chants Hare Krishna. Then he is taking bath in the river and a whole lot of elephants come, wild elephants. And Mahaprabhu, he opens his eyes and he says, hey, they are there in the water. So he splashes water on them. He says, chant Hare Krishna. And they start chanting. In fact, the elephants, they start rolling on the ground. They are in ecstasy. And slowly when Mahaprabhu is going, the deers, the rabbits, the snakes, the tigers, the wolves, elephants, all of them are following, all chanting Hare Krishna. And then, Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami describes something which is absolutely amazing. He says the deer and the tiger, they are kissing each other. No one has ever seen this. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu sees that and is very happy. And he quotes a particular verse from the scriptures, Srimad Bhagavatam. That what is this land of Vrindavan, the blessed land of Vrindavan, where even the animals which have natural animosity to each other, they are friendly to each other. There is no enviousness. This is the land, blessed land of Vrindavan. So this is the place, wherever the Lord is there, that's Vrindavan. The holy lands, they have that powerful effect of, you know, going into the heart of every living entity which is, which is like Zarikhanda forest with so many wild animals of Anarthas. But all of them, they become very conducive because of the Lord's presence. So that is why it is recommended that we all must go. It's one of the five most important principles of quickly achieving devotional success is to go to a dham and reside there and do our devotional service there. So that effect is seen here that even though Duryodhana is there and his powerful association can affect others, they are not affected. They are affected by the positive side. They are in fact appreciating the richness. Okay, how fortunate you are. They are not envious. It's a very easy thing that you should become envious because when somebody gets mercy of the Lord, other person, why he should get the mercy? Why not me? Why I can't sit with Krishna? Why him? But forgetting that they are actually glorifying the good fortune of all the Vrishni kings, all the Vrishni family members. So this is the effect of the association of the dham. And lastly we will speak a few words on Srila Vrindavan Das Thakur, whose today is his appearance day. Vrindavan Das Thakur is Vedavyas of Sri Chaitanya Lila. He, he is a son of Narayani, who was the daughter of Srivas Pandit's elder brother, Sri Nalina Pandit. And her good fortune is described by Vrindavan Dar Sakur himself in Chaitanya Bhagavat. That during the Mahaprakash Leela, when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was showing his various forms according to the reciprocation of each individual devotee, for 21 hours he did this continuously. And he is in ecstasy, very happy. 
in the mood of the Lord, not in the mood of devotee. At that time, Narayani was just four years old. And just to show the power of the holy name, power of his touch, he called Narayani. He touched her and he said, Narayani, chant in ecstasy. And immediately, just by that touch, she was swooned into ecstasy. She couldn't stop chanting Hare Krishna. She started crying, rolling on the ground. And in this way, Narayani got this mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And later on, Mahaprabhu gave his own Mahaprasad to Narayani. Practically every day, she would get little Mahaprasad. And the Kavi Karanapur describes that this Narayani is none other than Kilimbika, who was the younger sister of Ambika, who was a nurse of Lord Sri Krishna. So she would always preserve some food and give it to Kilimbika. So that same pastime continues in Chaitanya Lila and she would take that Mahaprasad and throughout her life she ate that Mahaprasad. And later on she was married to one uh, Rundavan Nath Pandit, something like that, that's his name is, in Mamgachi. And then she became a widow when Rundavan Das Thakur was in her womb. So he was raised by her uh, brother and she was Pandit's relatives. And in this way, Rundavan Das Thakur, when he was about four years that time, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took sannyas. And he was the last disciple of Sri Nityananda Prabhu. And because of Nityananda Prabhu's mercy, he could describe Jaitanya Lila in a very, very wonderful way. Particularly the childhood pastimes, the pastimes in Navadvip. But while he was writing, he had such a great appreciation. When you hear this, his prayers also, about his Gurudev, that is Nityananda Prabhu. He is always offering obeisances to Nityananda Prabhu. He was so immersed in the glories of Nityananda Prabhu that actually he couldn't describe too many of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's Leela. That is what it is said. And because of the fear that the book will become too voluminous, he stopped at the you know, Leela, the Puri, Jagannath Puri Leelas, he did not describe too many. And that is why later on, Krishna Raj Kaviraj Goswami wrote Chaitanya Lila in detail, which the part which Vrindavan Das Thakur had not written down. So Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami, he glorifies Vrindavan Das Thakur that he is the original Vyas of Chaitanya Lila and in front of him I am trying to attempt little bit of my own contribution to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's pastimes. But he says this is no way uh, to minimize the importance of Sri Chaitanya Bhagavat. Like that he is describing. And Vrindavan Das Thakur is famous for this Chaitanya Bhagavat, which gives blessings and curses. Vrindavan Das Thakur is very strong <laughs> that anyone who criticizes Nityanand Prabhu or any of his associates or any Vaishnava, he says, I will lati. He says, I will kick him in his head. So he's very strong. Why is he saying that? Because he's no, he knows the effect of such an offense. And then he gives a blessing that anyone who hears Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's Leela, even though he may not understand who Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, whether he is the Supreme Lord or not, he will still get connected to Lord Sri Krishna. So, on today's his appearance day, we can pray to Vrindavan Das Thakur to give us that kind of appreciation for our own Guru, our Guru Parampara, Sri Nityan Prabhu, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, which is the foundational principle of our devotional service. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Ram Hare Hare. Thank you very much for your patient listening. And if there are any comments or questions, we can take. Yes, Prabhu. Thank you, Prabhuji, for a wonderful class. 
Prabhuji, you were mentioning about uh, cultivating uh, a spirit of uh, respect and appreciation. Now, while coming to the temple in the morning, I was thinking on similar lines about how to cultivate gratitude. So, these concepts, to me it looks like a person is either born blind, you can't make him see. In a similar way, a spirit of gratitude or respect, appreciation has to be born with us. So, I don't know how I can really cultivate, so I would like to have your guidance. Very important question because this is a practical thing. We may say so many the theoretical things, but how to do it practically? So, our process is very simple. We hear theory and then we go to those people who practice that theory. Mahajano hmm? Gata Sapanta. The easiest way to do things, see, we are all born with a particular baggage. We have, even medically they speak that nine types of personalities are born, you can't change them. One who is an introvert throughout his life, he is going to remain introvert. You can't change something. People want, Mera bacha smart hona chahiye. But he is an introvert, now you can't help him. Later on he will be good, but right now he may, he may appear here dull, hai. Oh, that fellow is good, you know, because he is too bubbly. But he is born like that. That fellow later on is going to suffer. The introvert guy is probably likely to be very, he is a thinker. So personalities are born. Your baggage is already there with us. So somebody may be actually born in an arrogant kind of a mindset. It's possible. All of us, we have different baggages according to karma. But it is not a theory, ke, okay, once it has happened, nothing can happen now. Nothing can be done about it. Otherwise, why there are scriptures? Scriptures tell you, okay, you have to, supposed to do all these things because that means you have some independence to act on it. Otherwise, scripture would not talk about it. Whatever you are born, it's all your destiny. That's how you remain throughout your life. But there is a talk of cultivation in all the scriptures. So when you want these good principles of gratitude, respect, appreciation, so many things, then you need to be with those people who have it. Say for example, Srila Prabhupada's disciples, for example. Now they had only one person who could represent all these qualities in very big magnitude and they could see his life. So they knew how to be respectful. They knew how to eat properly. Everything Prabhupada did was with a perfection. So when we see the examples, automatically that seeps in to the consciousness. When you are with drunkards, you are like to become a drunkard. But when you are with a devotee who is practicing this kind of virtues, you are likely to get them. So we have to deliberate, constantly think about those virtues. Constantly look at those people who are practicing those virtues. Associate with them, serve them. Automatically it will come within us. That's the process. Mahajano Yanagata Sapanta. By associating with such personalities, they will automatically enter into But we have to have desire. If there is a desire that I want to become great, while Okay, I can be with Prabhupada, but I want to become great. Not accepted. With humility, when you want that kind of... First, we have to have desire. So, if you have the desire, I want gratitude. I want to become very humble. If there is no desire and you think, I am already a devotee. I need, to not, I need not do all these things, which is a disease. It's a diseased consciousness. When a person thinks that I am chanting Hare Krishna, means everything is okay. Now I can criticize anyone, I can do anything I want and Krishna will take care of everything. Why should Krishna take care of everything? It's, Krishna doesn't go against your desire. Yatha, yatha ichesu, tatha kuru. So if you don't show the desire to become humble, why Krishna will give you humility? Just because you are chanting Hare Krishna? No sir, no. You, want to ha you should want to have it. I want it. I want gratitude. In fact, his Holiness Radhanath Swami Maharaj, he always talks about, he says, a grateful heart is a gift of God. If he is pleased with you, that means you will get gratefulness. If you see gratefulness in your heart, 
be sure that Krishna is pleased with you. It's such an important thing in Krishna consciousness because from that stems everything. Whether it is respectfulness, appreciation, everything will start from a gratitude, heart which is filled with gratitude. So, hope we practice our in our own lives, these kind of things by taking association of those who already have this by their own practice, from their own Guru Parampara, from their own association. So, we just be with them and get it. Okay? Anything else? Grantaraj Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai, Srila Prabhupada ki jai.